Hello, my name is Marcy Brandenburg, and I am the bioinformationist at the University of Michigan Taubman Health Sciences Library. Today, we learn about Metscape, a Cytoscape plugin. Metscape can be used to visualize and interpret metabolomics and expression profiling data in the context of human metabolic networks. It can be used to visualize compound networks and display related information about reactions, enzymes, and pathways. Although not covered in this tutorial, you can also use this plugin to view pathways and create data animation. Metscape uses data from the Edinburgh Human Metabolic Network and KEG Compound Database. This image shows you the various workflows included in this plugin. You can use gene expression data, metabolomics data, and or gene set enrichment data. Please note that all types of data are not necessary, for you can use any single type of data or any combination of the data types. The bottom portion of this slide shows the various types of networks you can build with the Metscape plugin. You can build a compound network, a compound reaction network, a compound reaction enzyme gene network, or a compound gene network. Metscape not only provides a context for experimental data, utilizes prior knowledge of metabolic networks, and displays multiple measurements across observations, time points, and experimental conditions, but also integrates multidimensional data, which can be gene expression and metabolomics data, provides a broader view of metabolic networks, and links to diseases. For this tutorial, I will be using Cytoscape version 2.8.2 and Metscape version 2.3.1. To install the Metscape plugin, you can manually download the jar file and save it in the Cytoscape plugins folder, or use the plugin manager in Cytoscape. For this tutorial, I will do the latter. First, open Cytoscape and go to the plugins menu. Choose the first option, Manage Plugins. A Manage Plugins window should now appear. Under the Available for Install section, click the plus sign next to the Network and Attribute I slash O folder. Scroll down the list of available plugins until you find the Metscape plugin. Select the latest version of the plugin and click on Install at the bottom of the window. Installation of the plugin will now occur. Once the plugin is successfully installed, it will appear in the plugins menu. You can manually enter data into Metscape or load files containing experimental data. This portion of the tutorial will cover manually entering data. Go to the Plugins menu and click on Metscape. You get a list of options. Choose Build Network. Now, a Metscape tab displays on the left side of your screen in the control panel. Using the drop-down menu for organism, choose the appropriate species, in this case, rat. The core database in Metscape is human, so the rat and mouse data maps human data to their homologs using homologene. Next, click the Add button under the Compound section. An Add Compounds window will appear. 
type glucose into this window and click OK. Glucose will map to multiple entries in the database. Using the drop-down menu, choose the appropriate match, such as alpha-D-glucose. Notice that the CAG ID changes to match the chosen selection. This is a live link that will take you to the CAG record for this compound. Next, select OK. The compound information shows up in the Compound section on the Metscape tab. Now click the Add button under the Genes section. An Add Genes window will appear. Type NAT1 into this window and click OK. The gene information now shows up in the Genes section on the Metscape tab. Since I am using rat data, the information includes the rat gene ID, the rat gene symbol, and the human gene symbol. Under Network Type, use the drop-down menu to choose a network type. You can choose from Compound Reaction Enzyme Gene, Compound Reaction, Compound Gene, or Compound. I will choose Compound Reaction Enzyme Gene. Next, click on Build Network at the bottom of the tab. A network is generated in your Citerscape main network window. If you zoom in on your network, you will notice a variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. To see what these symbols represent, go to the Citerscape plugins menu, go down to Metscape, and select Show Legend. You can manually enter data into Metscape or load files containing experimental data. This portion of the tutorial will cover building a network based on experimental data. I will start by showing you the structure of each type of data file. If you choose to load a gene file, it should include the entree gene ID, the p-value, and the fold change or log fold change. You can input all genes, for example from a microarray. This is required for LR path, or you can input only significant genes. If you choose to load a concept file, the file should include the concept names, the concept types, the number of genes associated with each concept, the coefficient, odds ratio, p-value, false discovery rate, direction, and the list of significant genes. In this tutorial, a concept is defined as any group of genes. The concept file can be generated by a gene set enrichment analysis tool, such as GSEA or LRPATH. If you are not familiar with gene set enrichment analysis, it is an approach used to test for predefined biologically relevant gene sets that contain more significant genes from an experimental data set than expected by chance. With Metscape, you can either load an existing concept file or generate one using LRPath directly from the Metscape plugin. If you choose to load a compound file, the file should include the compound ID, which is the keg ID, the p-value, and either fold change or log fold change. To begin loading experimental data, go to the plugins menu and click on Metscape you will get a list of options. Choose Select Experimental Data. 
the Select Experimental Data window now appears. You can also access this window by clicking on the Select button from the Metscape tab if you already have it open. Using the drop-down menu for organism, choose the appropriate species, in this case, human. If you were to choose rat or mouse, know that the core database in Metscape is human, so the rat and mouse data maps human data to their homologs using homologene. In this example, I will load a compound file, a gene file, and a concept file. However, remember that not all three are necessary when using this plugin. Next, under the compound section, click the Import File button. Select the location of the compounds file and click Open. Using the drop-down menu next to p-value, choose the appropriate column heading from your loaded file. The options are based on the column headings used in the file you loaded. Then do the same thing for fold change. Notice that default threshold values appear, but these can be changed to meet your needs. Under the Genes section, click the Import File button. Select the location of the gene expression file and click Open. Using the drop-down menu next to p-value, choose the appropriate column heading from your loaded file. The options are based on the column headings used in the file you loaded. Then do the same thing for fold change. Notice that default threshold values appear, but these can be changed to meet your needs. If you want to include a concepts file, you have two options. If you do not already have a concept file, you can generate one using LRPATH, a gene set enrichment testing tool. To do this, simply click the button Generate Concept Data from Genes Using LRPATH. Gene set enrichment analysis will then be performed on the gene file you loaded, and concept information will be provided. However, if you already have a concept file, you can load it by using the Import File button under the Concept section. After selecting the Import File button, select the location of the concepts file and click Open. Once you have selected all the data files that you want to load, click OK at the bottom of the Select Experimental Data window. You will now see a missing data window on your screen. This shows the data values from your files that are not in the Metscape database. Metscape only includes genes that code for metabolic enzymes, so there may be a number of genes missing. To learn more reasons why your data values may be missing, click the question mark by the words, why are these elements missing? This will open a new window that lists several reasons why your data may be missing. Click OK to close this informational window. Back on the missing data window, you can either save this data to be able to view it at a later time, or click OK, at which point you will not be able to return to the missing data in the future. For this tutorial, I will click OK.
The Metscape tab now appears on the left side of the screen in the control panel. Notice that all the loaded data is filled in under the compounds and gene sections. On the Metscape tab, under Network Type, use the drop-down menu to choose a network type. You can choose from Compound Reaction Enzyme Gene, Compound Reaction, Compound Gene, or Compound. I will choose Compound Reaction Enzyme Gene. Next, click on Build Network at the bottom of the tab. Now you will see that a network has been drawn in your Cytoscape main network window. If you zoom in on your network, you will notice a variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. To see what these symbols represent, go to the Cytoscape plugins menu, go down to Metscape, and select Show Legend. Nodes that have a green outline mean that they are significant. This is based on the data I loaded. In addition, you will notice that some nodes are extra large and some are extra small. The extra large nodes mean they are upregulated and the extra small ones mean they are downregulated. However, the size does not correlate to a specific number. It just represents upregulation and downregulation. Once a network is built, there are two new tabs located in the data panel. These tabs are the pathway filter and the concept filter, with the concept filter data currently displayed. These two filters are included to provide a quick way to get potential subsets of interest from a large network. The data in the concept filter is based on the content created or loaded from the concept file. As a result, Examples of these concepts can be a KEG pathway, reactome pathway, or GO category. To sort the concepts by significance, click on the p-value column heading. Now, the most significant concepts are at the top. If you see a concept of interest, such as focal adhesion, click on the concept name. This will then highlight the concept within the drawn network. To further explore this concept, you can click Create Subnetwork, which will draw a subnetwork of that concept. I will now return to the original network and click on the Pathway Filter tab. The Pathway Filter includes those metabolic pathways from the Metscape database that have an element in the built network. If you click on a pathway of interest, it will highlight that pathway within the built network.
To further explore a specific pathway, click on the Create Subnetwork button, and it will build a subnetwork of that pathway. The leftmost tab in the Data panel is the Node Attribute Browser. This provides attribute information for nodes in the network. To view the attribute information, click on the Select Attributes button at the top left of the data panel. A list of attributes will appear. Check the boxes next to the attributes of interest. For example, I will select compound.formula, compound.name, enzyme.name, gene.description, gene.symbol, and reaction.pathway. Now I click anywhere outside of the attribute selection window. Notice that the attribute data fills into the appropriate areas. Columns can then be reordered by dragging and dropping them. Columns can be sorted by clicking on the column heading. The Edge Attribute Browser tab works similar to the Node Attribute Browser tab but it contains the attributes related to the edges instead of the nodes. To get additional information, you can double click on any node or edge, which will pull up the Node Edge Details panel. For more information, here are two citations for articles published on Metscape. In addition, there's a Metscape webpage and a user manual available online. I would like to acknowledge the following people and organizations for their contributions to this tutorial.